Hello, Brother Monroe here. Welcome back to, well, not Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts itself, but uh, Brother Monroe reads a blog post. Um, <laughs> so this post uh, went up on the Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts website, which is where I'm reading it from. Also went up on the forums where you can respond to it. And I believe it also went up on the Steam community discussion page for the game as well. Um, talking about the roadmap till summer. Um, and well, I'll, I'll start off just by reading it and giving my thoughts on what is here. Uh, and then I'm going to talk more about what it means because it sounds an awful lot to me like the roadmap till summer is the roadmap till the game is dropped, um, or at least, you know, it's going to move forward from being actively developed to being, you know, a game that is is done and, you know, critical bug fixes and compatibility and stuff, but that's probably about it. Anyway, um, uh, Stars of Str <laughs> Strong, Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts has been fully released. Uh, well, I did a whole video on that. Uh, I don't think it was fully released uh, in anything but name only, but... Okay, um, and this is basically saying that, uh, yeah, needs to be supported with new content and needed fixes. Um, we've already done a lot of hot fixing. Uh, interesting that this came the day after a hot fix, uh, 1.1.5, 1 which was pretty bad. Um, a lot of old bugs suddenly came back. I haven't tried 1.1.6, I'm going to be doing that. Um, immediately after finishing recording this, uh, hopefully they fixed what they broke. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, uh, yes, they have been patching quickly, but sometimes it is a case of one step forward, two steps back. Um, sometimes it's a case of two steps forward, one step back, and sometimes it's just a step forward. So, so they're a bit all over the place. Um, most of them have been good. I'm just being a little bit salty about that um so again is this really the language that you would use? ultimate admiral dreadnoughts should all be already playable stable enough and enjoyable now that's not how i would phrase it i would say if if i had a released game i would say dreadnoughts is and i wouldn't even put playable or stable um, I would put, you know, Dreadnoughts is enjoyable and is a fully functioning game like it is. Um, I mean, very rare you get a crash to desktop or something like that. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not problems with it that kind of ruin um, people's immersion and things that need fixed. And I personally think that their list is upside down. And I'm, I think the developers might as well, because so I'm going to go scroll all the way down to the bottom. Point number eight, which is their apparently their top priority. Uh, why it's not number one when it's your top priority, I have no idea. Um, anyway, <laughs> I'm going to read it as number one. We have already fixed several reported bugs or inconsistencies. They have. Um, we already continue to fix down problems and things you report to us. They do. Um, and they have launched a thread in the Game Lab and Steam forums where you can comment on what they're talking about in this blog post, um, where you can mention your biggest concerns, issues that prevent you from fully enjoying the game. Mine would be the inverse penetration problem. Um, that's probably the biggest one at the moment that's kind of ruining my immersion. Um but they know about that already. <laughs> and uh, so far, those, the thread on the Game Labs forum, anyway, has been very positive, and I would encourage people to approach it in that in that manner. Um, and they do mention here, and they mention somewhere else, something that um, a lot of people are aware of, but not everybody, uh, is that new features are difficult because the development team is in Kiev, or at least most of it, not all of it. Um, so priorities on fixes, which is 
I think absolutely what the community has been asking for um, anyway, so I don't think there's any problems with that. We might as well go in reverse order. Uh, seven, uh, language localization. Um, there are some... Interesting question. Uh, shush. There are... <laughs> yes, thank you, Siri. Uh, <laughs> there are some um, English <laughs> problems with the game at present. It, it does need a little, little look. There's a couple of things, particularly in the events, that don't quite... Makes sense, but it's nice to see German, French, Spanish, Russian, Japanese, simplified Chinese, Korean, and Greek uh, being added as localization options. That's good to see. Um, general UI and window interface improvement. Uh, good. I was never a fan of the brown AI. Um, if you go back and look at some of my really old videos on Dreadnoughts back in the alpha, was it five, six? days uh, they had a more blue ui that i actually preferred and the uh the pop-ups and the in-game text was actually a little bit better i think um and they moved to the brown ai um uh, ui sorry um but yeah ui ui improvements absolutely i don't think you could ever have a perfect ui uh, <laughs> uh, better support for windows systems alt tabbing in borderless game windows stuff like that all good Performance optimizations, yes, please, yes, please. Improve for the, the loading times, yes, good. I think loading times are actually pretty damn decent. Uh, ch uh, lag in battles, there are a few weird things with that, but it's it's better than it it was um, when 110 first came out. Check Unity CPU thread management. Does that mean we're getting multi-threaded multi support, please? Tell me we're getting multi-threaded support. Um, it's 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 such a <coughs> it's such a bottleneck. Um, like if you have a performance monitor running, I'm running on an eight-core CPU, um, and I get slightly better performance than Stealth, who's playing on a twelve-core CPU because my single core that's actually doing something clocks higher. So yeah, it it definitely. Um, you know, the, the average gamer on Steam has a quad-core CPU. You really need to uh, be including that. So good to see that being mentioned. Um, and various other things. Uh, they're basically saying, yeah, look, we, we've done a lot of stuff on this already. And they have. Uh, but yeah, multi-threaded support, that's a big one. Fixing uh, the the frame time spikes that's also very good to see map graphics finalization um so they're saying the map includes all the necessary content uh which is true and they say it's not flat as in ships can move all across the world and uh, mm, a lot of players would like the map to have horizontal looping, i.e. if you scroll right on the map, or east if you prefer, you end up just going around and coming back. And they say that would only be aesthetic as the main functionality is already implemented. Now, this is probably the only point where I disagree, but I'll come back to that in a minute. Um, and they say, oh, that could bring in bugs and break saves and players won't like it um and then they mention some things they do want to do with the map inconsistencies in provinces uh ui and graphical enhancement now i don't agree with th this uh statement that it is an aesthetic thing um and someone has made this point on the forums before me already anyway, and I completely agree with them. Uh, the it, It's a frustration for the player. So if you are playing as Japan or the United States, the two nations that deal with the Pacific, especially if you're at war with each other, and you want to send a ship, say, from the Philippines to Hawaii... You have to go all the way back. It, it is it is an annoyance. 
And I have to say, it's pretty basic to have a 2D map that wraps round. And if you are thinking, oh, pff, what does he know? He doesn't program. Now, I don't know. I don't program. No, it's true. But what I do know is that when I first started doing YouTube, this was back in 2011, and I play, I have videos of me playing Victoria 1. Now, Victoria 1 by Paradox is a pretty old game. <laughs> uh, it was all, it was not new when I was making videos on it, and it had a wraparound map. I'm not even sure what the first uh, looping or looping map, as they call it, the first game with that would be. I would have to look back quite a long way. But I can think of a large number of games. Uh, Defcon, for instance, has a looping map um, that are not particularly advanced or particularly complicated. Uh, I'm pretty sure if you go back to... I'm trying to think of other global global map games. But anyway, there's two examples that are both from over 10 years ago, uh, more <laughs> and more that have that functionality. I think they are making a big, big mistake if they don't include that. That is going to be a... <laughs> that is going to be a, a Steam review, what is going on here kind of response from a lot of people who are new to the game. They're just going to think, what is this? Like, it's it's, it's a pretty basic feature that I, I think players do expect to be done regardless of save breaking and regardless of potential bugs. I think that does need to go in. Uh, put it in in a 1.2 update so it's clear that, yeah, saves are going to break. Um, warn players that their saves are going to break when 1.2 comes out. If that's what you need to do, fine. But uh, yeah, do do not, please, if you're listening, do not think that you can like actually leave the game with the map as it currently is, where you have to scroll all the way back across. Like, I think most players have been kind of expecting that to be done i certainly have like I, I get not doing it straight away but yeah you need to do you need to do something with that right next uh new hulls um i'm gonna read this back to front as well uh it says that our main modeler is situation kiev now this is something i am glad to get confirmation of i have suspected this because Back in 2021 and 2020, we got hulls about once a month, uh, new detailed hulls. They, they were being added to the game pretty consistently. Um, we sometimes got more than one hull in an update. Um, and ever since a year ago, when the war in Ukraine began, um, that, that pace has dropped off. And of course it has. I mean... You're, you're kind of busy uh, doing other things. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's not easy to sit and make beautiful battleships when, you know, that's going on. So it's nice to see new hulls, but I would, I would tentatively say that adding uh, a USS Texas-style dreadnought or, bat or New York-class battleship, as they put it... Uh, the Atlanta class cruiser with a size swap that can produce a Cleveland. Very welcome for the United States, but the United States is not the only... Uh, and I know they repeat them, so, you know, we tend to get about 10 hulls out of each detail model. Um, and a C-class generic interwar cruiser, lovely, but this is nowhere close... To the number of hulls that are missing from the game and i do use the term missing because they were clearly planned because uh there are spots in the research from the tech tree where you get a question mark 
and that is obviously where a hull is supposed to be, but isn't there yet because the model hasn't been made. Now, I would have liked them to have said, you know, yes, main support is going to finish in the summer. We want to get everything done, but we're going to keep bringing the hulls out every now and then as our modeler cat. I think they should keep keep their main modeler <laughs> on Dreadnoughts uh, until they have all of the hulls done. Um, then let them take as long as they want. Uh, you know, maybe they're the only person working on the game. I mean, I wouldn't mind. But if you're going to drop support for the new hulls, please, 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 please let modders add the hulls in. Um, give modders a way to import models into the game somehow. Um, it can be done. It's built in Unity. It can definitely be done. Um, and let, let the community finish this off. Um, for you, um, which is free from your point of view, um, or keep your model or on one of the two, please. Uh, next, uh, spotting distance improvements. Um, if you're already using the balance mod by Admiral Snackbar, which you absolutely should, um, this is probably not uh, as bad of an issue, but they want a new visibility mechanic uh main one being that ships that fire cannot be unspotted uh so no more uh advanced star trek 6 um cloaking devices <laughs> and um talking about you know fog of war and fading in and out and stuff like that cool and lastly weather graphics this is a big one that I know this has been planned for some time. Basically so that you no longer are sailing under a clear blue, sunny, calm sea, as they put it, and then you hover over the weather report and it's like it's a force 10 gale <laughs> at, at midnight. Um, and they do mention night battles uh, as well. Um... Now, night battle graphics are not currently in the game, so they're going to have to have come up, come up with a new skybox for that. Um, but uh, yes, good, good. Um, nice to see this being coming in. This was always a planned feature, as far as I'm aware, um, but they've never actually officially said yes, we're we're putting it in. But pretty obvious that that was going to have to be added at some point so where do we stand on this well i would argue that the weather graphics uh the hulls the maps graphics finalization perform all, all of this stuff is not post-release stuff none of this is post-release stuff that you would do this is all this is basically a roadmap till early access finishes and i know the game is technically out of early access but the point there is on technically. Uh, I think this very much shows that he's not out of early access. This is, you know, this is not the game is finished. This is we are. This is what we're going to do to finish the game. Now that's all well and good. This is all. This is a good list, um, and the feedback on it has been positive. But I, I am just concerned that if this is all that the game gets, the game will be fun, and it will be released in a fun state, apart from uh, issues with the map and hulls. But I think that, I think people that would are, right, are rightly going to be disappointed if, after this roadmap is complete, that any development of the game just stops. Now, I understand that the business of making games is quite brutal. Um, you cannot keep developers on a game that isn't selling, uh, that is done. They need to move on to new projects because that's what makes money and that is how you pay them their salaries and so on and so on. 
However, if you're going to do that, Game Labs, and you're listening, please, 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 please chat to the modders, uh, chat to Sapphire, chat to Admiral Snackbar, and get them the tools and the documentation that you're able to to allow them and the community to continue to um, improve the game post-release. It's a good business decision. You know, it's free development on your game. Uh, you get to keep selling your game that keeps getting better because the community is fixing it up for you and making it better and better. And this model can absolutely work. Um, and if you need a game to look at, and you're not aware of this, um, look at Supreme Commander Forged Alliance. Now, that's a slightly different situation because the studio that made it folded, but that game is still going strong and is miles better than when it came out and is still receiving pretty major updates. For instance, okay, uh, it, it always had a problem with a massive air battles with hundreds of fighters engaging on each side. The game would slow down to a crawl because it was back in the single-threaded days. Um, and, yeah, it did just tank the CPU. Modders were able to fix that. Okay, it maybe took them 10 years to fix it, but they did fix it. Um, and I think that if you want Ultimate Admiral to, you know, live on as a vibrant niche game, then you're going to have to allow the community to continue to to have a look and, and to continue to improve it. Um, if, if you are unable to, um, let the community do it. Anyway, um, I hope those of you who are still watching <laughs> enjoyed enjoyed this look at this kind of update and news. Let me know down in the comments what you think they need to do that's not on this list. Let me know as well, what do you think about the map in particular? Do you think it is acceptable in... 2023 to have a strategy game where you can't scroll <laughs> you you can't loop scroll as they put it or you can't infinitely scroll the map um is that okay is that up to the standard that you would expect um i have a suspicion that i know how that's going to go but that aside thank you very much for listening to me waffle on about this uh, links to this post will be in the description if you want to go and read it for yourself and if you head over to the game labs forum or to the steam discussion page you could make your thoughts known and please again be positive uh, if no other reason you're not going to get anywhere <laughs> by saying oh, this is terrible uh, you're not they're not going to listen to you so be positive Give them things they can actually work on and implement. And uh, I'll see you again soon for some more Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Bye for now.